Yeah, I actually really, really love these bands coming through. You can tell that the Bangkok Titans have done their homework. The Victor is an interesting one, but seeing Naru played in their last game, he was fantastic on that champion. It's the Alistair that I'm looking at here that Dark Passage will be able to pick up if they want to. It was back-to-back -back bands in their grand final victory that they did take against Besiktas. But look, we'll see how this one turns out in the end. But once again, Callista's been left open. We'll see whether Lloyd wants to pick up that champion or whether it's going to get through. Yeah, so that's the interesting adaptation that has taken place here is they've banned Thresh away from Moss instead of the Alistar, which is going to be very interesting. It's very easily takeable here for Dark Passage, but they've gone for the Callista in response. Yeah, the Callista has been first picked by the, by the Titans as they are trying to get through with their next set, but Dark Passage, you mentioned, they can take away the Alistair, they can take away the Braum, they've got their pick of the litter for supports right now, and with 007's Elise ban, they might look for the Gragas instead. Yeah, I was actually um, looking at this, you know, when we were playing this one out last time, Detonation focused me against the Chiefs, I was looking at the Chiefs thinking that Swiper could pick up the Maokai, we saw that hovered by Elwind here, I mean, having a targeted CC to get mm -hmm. on top of that Callista is a good idea, but letting it through despite that, I mean, it's very, very scary, irrespective. We'll see yeah. whether Dark Passage have a plan for it moving forward. But Crystal, he's managed to grab his Rek'Sai one more time. And yeah. Yeah, so what is that now? 14 out of 22 games? Yeah. If we include the regular split, mm -hmm. two of the Turkish An incredible league. Rek'Sai player. Looks like he's going to return to it after that previous game. I believe he was something silly like 2-1-11 by the end. Yep, yeah, the man definitely had a scoreline. He's done yeah. well, and that's that's the most interesting part about this whole thing is that he's been given Whoa. it again. And that's because they ban away the mid laners, but that, that was quick. Yeah, and I've learned this one as well, is the fact that blind picking a melee assassin in the mid lane Doesn't is dangerous, matter. Rusty. Nope, not if your name is G4. <laughs> that's one thing to consider is he plays the Varus, he's got some other pocket poke style of champions, but he's most comfortable when he's playing melee assassins because it's just his thing. It's what he makes work yeah. to a great degree of success. So no hesitation, locks in the Diana. Yeah, he's the kind of guy who's going to beat you in lane, either get a solo kill or force you back multiple times, and then split push, taking turret after turret before he finally groups up with his team and they win. That really has been how the Bangkok Titans have won in the past, but Dark Passage, I don't think we're quite going to let them be that passive and allow G4 to play that effectively because Crystal, he loves roaming all across the map. Oh, and I'd be so excited for this. Dark Passage playing with the magical journey. Magical, dangerous dark journey could oh potentially God. be taken here, and they're going to lock it in. <laughs> Zytenod as well, hopping back onto that, uh, the Cogmore that just completely escaped my brain somehow, and Lulu is still up. Warlock may be able to take that one back into the top lane, potentially. Of course, yeah. we saw it on day one. Do we call it day one? Yeah. Well, you know, in the game against the Chiefs, <laughs> it didn't actually quite get through, day but we did see him playing that one up there in the top lane. So we'll see whether that is going to be taken away because the lulu Cogmore combination is despicable. Yeah, yeah, it's very scary. We're looking at the next picks for the Bangkok Titans. They've got the Love top it. lane and the jungle. Lulu being looked at by Warlock. They honestly have to. They have to go Lulu or they're giving away what is potentially Lulu for Elwind. Mm -hmm. No, it's Naru that would be getting the Lulu and that's perfectly fine. So what they're doing here, Dark Passage, by picking the Kogma is bottlenecking where the Lulu is going to go for this Bangkok Titan oh, side. Oh, kind of. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I could play it to a degree. <laughs> more than happy to play it. Of course, he played Lee Sin in the IWCI. This guy's more <laughs> yeah. than happy to play whatever he wants up there in the top lane, but they are going to lock it in. Haven't quite seen where it's going just yet. Of course, I just love Flex. Let's Rusty. just make you know the that. fair assumption, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> And he's he's going to take Callista the in the jungle top lane. The jungle bomb's going to be there. Really glad that we're going to see the support yeah. Gragas. Let's look over Dark Passage's side, Rusty. <laughs> we go off pick order. It's actually AD Gragas. But yeah, <laughs> Dark Passage, they've got the last pick, and it is on to them as to where they would like to go for the mid lane, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Everything Naru. still well and truly up for Naru, besides what has been banned, which is a yeah. lot of his favorite champions, though he's still got some... He, so right now he's hovering the Flash Ghost. Victor taken away. I'm thinking it could be Twisted, twisted fate. fate. Potentially. Potentially. What? We'll see well, what yeah, he we'll, does we'll want to go for here. Of course, he's played a heck of a lot of different champions. This is it. a massive Ariana's one for him. But yes. control mages in general are exactly what Naru is very comfortable on. Plus, you can add that command protect to your Cogmore. Really get that shockwave going on on top of your Maokai. I like it for the team fight.
This is going to be a scary mid lane for G4. Crystal coming out of the wing. Suddenly he's got a command protect. Then knock up shockwave. Damage on top of damage. Oh, Could yeah. be scary. But final team comps locked in. Bash uh, Bangkok Titans versus Dark Passage. We're getting in the game. And it's a mixed bag here, honestly, from Bangkok Titans. You look at the team comp that they've now completed. They've got assassins, they've got tanks, they've got a lot of damage over time, and then they've got a Lulu, which really does feel like the odd one out of the team comp. And that's solely on the fact that they took it away from Dark Passage, so it was picked out of necessity for their team. So what does it provide? It provides a lot of survivability for the Callista. It gives an added option for Diana to be overly aggressive and go in. And it just doesn't match as much as the rest of Dark Passage. Yeah, and the thing that I'm looking at here is the fact that they do have the Lulu, and yes, picking it away from the potential Lulu Cogmore comp is a fantastic idea, but you often pick it into these sort of burst mages, these champions that want to be eliminating a single target and then moving on through, and they struggle if they can't do that. On the side of the Dark Passage, they've got Orianna, massive consistent damage. You can just throw the ball around wherever yeah. she wants, and Cogmore, I mean, he's a turret. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to be doing consistent damage. It's his job. It's his thing. Yeah. We'll see how it works out, but running through the lineups, you can see them on your screen as we prepare to get into game. The only team not to have taken a win yet, it's Bangkok Titans versus Dark Passage. Will they be able to get that win? As right now, Dark Passage, they're probably feeling pretty good about their win. Certainly would be, and of course, odds actually favoring Bangkok Titans, as mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier. Blue side playing a big factor for all of these teams and finding victories. The Callista, the first pick, is always a very big point of contention that needs to be considered. And Lloyd has got that, so that's very scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll see whether the, lock the lockdown CC is going to be enough here as well, because, I mean, that is going to be very, very important, making sure that Callista doesn't get past the first round of CC. Yeah. Because that's the main thing. If she gets past the first round, then she just bounces away. She's Heels like right that annoying up. rabbit that you just can't <laughs> pin down. And we'll look, we'll see whether they can get on top of her and kill her or whether she's just going to run away with this we game. We certainly shall as we get onto the rift between the Bangkok Titans and Dark Passage. Uh-oh. The Titans might be looking for something a little cheesy as they group as five. Elwind could be in trouble. Warlock splits off. Hey, not every, you know, five-man party is going to be a cheese party, Dom, you know? We <laughs> might just be getting togetherness going on, getting some deep vision down. We'll see what they are going to decide to They're do. Nice saplings, saplings there yeah. for yeah. Elwin, though. He's going to spot out Moss. Another sapling should spot everyone else out. Measure. Oh, man, yeah. not very good at soccer. So then we have to ask the question, are the Bangkok Titans looking for a lane swap with this? I mean, the objective of this is, if possible, find a few kills with the early Braum, but more importantly, find wards. It's not necessarily to go for a direct lane swap themselves. It's to get vision of the potential lane swap. You look at the lane Callista and Braum, and that is exceptionally strong in laning phase. Bard is a very good laner. In fact, he's arguably one of the best laners, but that's in a one versus one style of scenario where you take into account the Cogmore, he's strong with Minions W up, but the prolonged trade, you had to give the advantage definitely to the Bangkok Titans in the 2v2. So the warding that they're putting down right now is just to get vision, to see if they want to put the lane swap into effect from the opposition side here of Dark Passage and match mm -hmm. it, or deal with it accordingly. Interesting. Well, we'll see if they will pull out that lane swap. As you can see, we are entering into a pause. We'll get that figured out as quick as possible. I think we'll manage to n navigate this one. Yeah. Not I exactly mean... unknown territory. <laughs> But let's let's talk a little bit about the Titans. You know, they were looking to get aggressive with this. They are on blue side, so they do have the favored win rate when it's all said and done. But Dark Passage, will they be the first ones to upset that 100% win rate? Dark Passage, they're the favorites, are arguably, coming into mm -hmm. this tournament. So they've found themselves with a very strong draft. It feels like the kind of draft that they want to have. It's not necessarily the top five meta picks that they could possibly want. They don't have the Lulu and the Callista. That has been taken away from them on the flip side. But what they have is a roaming party that can work between the support and jungle. They can get in the face of everybody. They can make a lot of early rotations happen. And this is a big factor as to why they might want the lane swap themselves. We saw the fact that like the early warding that was actually placed down by Bangkok Titans is in a way to deal with seeing if the lane swap happens and they'll probably look for the standard lanes. But if they're unlocked, if Dark Passage actually gets what they're looking for, if they get the lane swap and Bard gets completely unlocked, they can just run away with the map. Mm. 
Yeah, and that's the thing. You can run around, you can pick up your meeps, you can grab all of your chimes <laughs> from around the map and get moving really quickly. And of course, augment your auto attack, augment all of your damage there on the bard. He's built as a roaming support, so try and get to the point where you can really unlock him, move him around the map. I want to talk as well about the mid lane here, Oriana versus the Diana. This might be an opportunity for G4 to really get things going. Of course, Oriana not known for a mid-game strength, which is when you're going to have your Diana at her peak. I mean, you're going to finish the Abyssal Scepter, something like that, get that early penetration. And once you hit level six, really hard to get you off once she's in there right mm -hmm. on top of you. Yeah. yeah. So Oriana is the triple threat in terms of itemization when she becomes yeah. really relevant and can start taking people down, not only solo, but in team fights. Whereas Diana looks towards one item for assassination, two items for assassination, plus team fighting, and three items for just being ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and it does depend on how accelerated she gets. But we are, of course, back onto the rift, ladies we, and gentlemen. We are indeed. G4 will find Naru in the mid lane. No lane swaps for those mid laners. <laughs> I don't know why that would happen in that case, but yeah, yeah it's not Look, going it's to be. it's happened before, <laughs> just not this season. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite, but they're going to be trading off as best they can. I'm actually looking forward to see how G4 builds this Diana, because we saw in the last game when Saros took it, he actually went for the Abyssal first into his Zonias. He was going to dive in and destroy you, not going for the Nasher's Rylai split push, but well, Dark, Dark Passage. G4 was looking to pull the lane forward. Has been using the flash there, but the Twisted Advance is on top of G4. Exhaust is down first blood. So easy for Naru. And this is really smart from Dark Passage. The way that Diana plays the lane, and it's something that you can, you can always commend G4 for doing, is pushing it and making sure that you get level two for free by getting it to the turret. But in doing so, he leaves himself vulnerable to an early gank. And that is exactly what Dark Passage did they capitalized on that phenomenally, and they're oh, coming they back, back for more. Oh no, G4 has no flash. Is he going to make it out this time? Yeah, he sees them coming from the side, but Dark Passage, starting off with first blood, they're feeling nice and aggressive in this set. Did G4 just have a casual giggle there as well once he walked out of the way? <laughs> so keeping his spirits up here as well on the rift, but Bangkok Titans looking for a potential dive here. That's going to happen. Lloyd's is going to lock that one down with the Ren. Moss tanks it up. Not even going to die. But really, really easy here from the Bangkok Titans. The response has come through. So they're at one kill apiece. But the key difference is the mid lane kill was just a kill. The top lane one, maybe oh. more. Flash yeah. tag is going to find Rydal, but he makes it under the tier two. One for one trade. This game is action packed. Yeah, I love that from Moss as well. The stand behind me into the instant Winter's Blight. Looked like he got Fates called. Uh, Look at the <laughs> Callista. She's not quite level six yet. Not quite getting up there. Crystal, once again, just exerting some pressure as he secures Scuttle Crab to keep his Kogma safe. And I guess that's really the big difference so far. Is that Lloyd? He's got the safety of his team as they set up for a dive. But Zaynot on the other side, he's just got a deep freeze built up. Yeah, and he's going to freely farm as well and get the solo experience, which is super important for a Kogma increases the range and just ramps up with that level six power spike as well to something unreal. The key factor between this right now is that Lulu's spending a lot of time rotating and roaming around the map and not actually laning, whereas the Maokai spent a lot of time laning. But to contrast that, the Maokai's also spent time in the death chamber, so he's not actually laning himself. And this is where it's matched to almost even. Oh, G4 might be caught out again. Teleport coming in. Nice G4 teleport. actually pulls Crystal back. He's got a flash, but here's Warlock. Crystal tries to turn it around. Flash, will they be able to get him? No, Crystal gets out. Third man of the minions, pretty good there too. Yeah, and that was a level two Lulu also. So in terms of teleport and impactful ganks, it was successful <laughs> in denying the engage from Crystal. Not really going to kill anything. Yeah. But once again, Warlock, he's out of his lane, not catching experience. He's, he's spent more time in this mid lane trying to cover for G4 than actually in an impacting lane. That's true. Naru is going to find his time to head back to base here, though. Fiendish Codex was picked up by G4, so it looks like it is going to be the Nashor's Tooth first up. We've seen a little bit more popular at the moment on the Diana. Of course, the item has been buffed just a bit as well. Cosmic Binding not going to find Lloyd here as he's happily 2v1ing with Moss hanging out about the side. Yeah, this is a very scattered game here from both of these teams, but it's definitely reactive more so than anything else is that we've got a Lulu solo farming the middle lane against a Rek'Sai solo farming the middle lane. 
And it's because of recall timings and the way that they're moving around the map. And speaking of moving around the map, I think the most important part to take from all of this is that the Rek'Sai's not. No, which is generally what uh, Rek'Sai does like to do. But Crystal has most certainly been farming. Rusty, that is exactly what he's been doing. 20 to 7 here. His 007X has been doing his 007X things, which is trying to be there to pick up the kills, but has just not managed to find too many after that initial dive in the top lane. But you were talking about sort of a chaotic nature of this game, and you have to think, if you look at the Bangkok Titans' history, that's how they love it. That's how they want to play League of Legends. And this is honestly their play style to a T as well, is that they like to pressure every single lane, and that unlocks their jungler 007 to make ganks, to invade the jungle, and be in the opposition instance, side of the map, as we are currently observing. <laughs> the fact that he can do that, and it's a force of habit from Bangkok Titans, to be fair, they do this to a fault occasionally, and can be capitalized on. We saw this in the Chiefs game. But when he can successfully do that, it's when Bangkok Titans look at their best. Now, the thing is, though, Dark Passage are ahead in farm in both the bottom lane and the top lane here. Maokai more than happily farming over double the CS of Warlock, which is at the moment about 19 CS, which is not a gigantic amount. But as far as this lane swap is concerned, it seems to be working out agriculturally for Dark Passage. So far, things nice and slow after the early chaos as everyone tries to keep pace with their lane partners. Zeitnot finally is going to get a glimpse of the elusive Kalista as it heads down to the bottom lane. Recall completes Buildwater and Phage for Zeitnot. And now the supports are just going to play tag with each other as they try to get some wards out. You know, the best part is it wasn't even chaos. It was just, you just ganked me mid as four members. So I'm just going to dive top as four members because that's where we have the numbers. It was <laughs> the revenge story. Yeah, again, yeah. very reactive in the way of doing it. And honestly, it's just slightly accelerated laning phase, all things considered. A kill going down to Kalista and being equal in farm is massive because you can see the items relatively even, but having that extra life still having that extra sustain, if they manage to get a successful trade, then they look very ahead. Well, Moss threading the needle there on that Winter's Bite onto the Cogmore. Crystal once again. He's, this guy is just always in the right spot waiting. But no engagement is going to come out. And I really like this out of the Rek'Sai player just because of the fact that the Callista lane just inherently is going to want to fight. Yeah, definitely is. So the way that the pressure is coming down here, Crystal is honestly one of the smartest junglers you'll ever see move around the map. The ganks aren't necessarily successful, but he's always there. He's not necessarily proactive again, but always there. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Oh, that cosmic binding, though, was fantastic. Moss loses half of his health bar there. Only level 4 at this stage. Level 5 for Rydal. Of course, being bard helps you out in that front. Little meep. Oh, man, love that champion so much. That's great. So, nine minutes in, we're not seeing too much action outside of those early ganks. There is a late scaling Kog'Maw and a pretty mid scaling, mid to late scaling Kalista. How are yeah. we expecting these team fights to work out? Well, you said it yourself, essentially. The mid game is in favor of Bangkok Titans. They have a member nearby here looking for a gank as well. Oh, oh they're going. Yeah, Fates Excellent. Call goes down onto Zeitnot here as the stun's gonna be there with the Winter's Bite. Meanwhile, G4 is gonna take down the mid lane there. Actually, both of them just trading one for one, but the action's still occurring here on the bottom side. Teleport in has been answered already by Elwin, but Warlock comes in, does have the wild growth. That was a whole lot of nothing. Oh, they're going again. Yeah, they are. This is going to be 007X who's caught out on the side. He goes down while the rest of the Titans are forced to back away and Dark Passage get the better of this skirmish. They get the better, but only by the smallest amount. There's another teleport. They are not done. Yep. G4 makes his way in. The wow. flash out of the way of the Tempered Fate. They take the magical journey, though, underneath the turret. It's Crystal. Does he have the tunnel? He does. And it's not going to be the Crescent Strike to land now as... These living artilleries are doing work for Zeitnot. <laughs> Teleport, pretty good summoner spell is what we can take from this entire engage is that not many people have gone down. I think one member from Bangkok Titans, all things considered. So Dark Passage, they come out slightly ahead in that trade. They do really well. The pit lane is killing each other in the middle of that whole thing happening. G4 respawning and then coming back to the bottom lane with his own Teleport to play a part in that engage. <laughs> that was a beautiful nightmare. Yeah, G4 was neck deep under the turret as well. Yeah. That was what he was doing. He was sort of dry humping the outer turret in the mid lane, <laughs> taking Naru down with him there. So, look, 
If you're going to get a kill, you may as well get it. And that's with a teleport as opposed to an ignite that yeah. was in the hands of Yoriana. <laughs> So that speaks volumes as to how that was going. Naru playing defensively, gets dove for his troubles, and then able to have an impact on other parts of the map. That honestly would have favored. They're oh, going. Oh, G4 dashes into Naru. Shockwave finds the two of them. He's taking a lot of damage, Whoa. gets destroyed by G4. Completely wrecked right there. Very smart <laughs> play from G4. Can traverse the entire lane in the span of about a second, even just using that second ultimate before the Q connects to ensure that he can use the E, keep Orianna close by. And he had to use a shockwave on top of himself to ensure it connected. There was no escape. Yeah, did made, make use of the fact that he got the extra resistances there by having the ball on his head, but was not helping out there. Does have the Athenes on Holy Grail completed, does have some boots now as well. The G4 very close to grabbing that. Oh, sword going. of his and Rydal gets followed. He's going to oh, be stunned man. as well. The golden man becomes even more golden. So Rydal's going to fall down for the fourth kill of the Bangkok Titans. And Blue Side is looking powerful at the moment, <laughs> gentlemen. G4 is looking powerful. Yes. The fact that he can actually find kills everywhere that he's looking at the moment is going to play wonders for this team. We were talking just beforehand about how these teams are going team fights and scaling. Well, you know what? They're just going to fight again, apparently. Yeah, not going to yeah, just a fate call. Just wants to wants to chuck a brom around. It makes sense. Well, this is what we expected from Lloyd. That he is the very aggressive, hyper mechanical player. If he can outplay you, he will at the very least try. Though Zeitnot looks to make sure that it is only an attempt and not an actual success. That was an interesting trade. They're using the Cutlass active just to let him know that he has a Cutlass. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Take my one button. One hundred damage. What? You'd stop practicing. Yeah, that so Crystal King shows guy. himself on the bottom side of the map now as he secures the Scuttle Crab. Might be looking for some action onto Moss and Lloyd, but he's going to play it safe for now. We haven't seen any dragons just yet, as it has been Skirmish City, and it's still very even when it's all said and done. Yeah, G4 has picked up that Nashor's Tooth. Now Magic Mandel there sitting down as well, so probably wants the Negatron Cloak into the Abyssal Scepter when he can. Let's see whether that is what he decides to go with. But Rusty, what is sort of the benefit of taking the Nashor's Tooth instead of the Abyssal Scepter earlier? It's really good for split pushing because he can just destroy minions with auto attacks alone. It also gives him that extra power in that he has the ability power. He's not just an assassin from spells alone because he can couple that with auto attacks, intertwine them, and just becomes his overwhelming power in a dueling scenario. Keep in mind that if he had a Zonia's, had an Abyssal, it's a combat team fight stat. Whereas you go for a Nasha's Tooth, it's a dueling set, similar to a Trinity Force on a top lane. Well, we'll see whether G4 is going to continue in his style that he often does decide to employ, which is, see you later team, I'm heading into a different <laughs> lane. We'll certainly see if that's the case. His teleport is coming up in just a few, so it would likely be sending Lloyd and Moss somewhere else, as Warlock is content to keep trading it out. Harass finds Lloyd and Moss in the bottom lane, but Zeitnot continues to maintain the CS advantage over Lloyd. Isn't quite able to do too much with it, though, as he looks for Eternity Force to call his own. Yeah, it's very different to the Detonation Focus new match, though. Of course, not quite the CS advantage. Only about 11 at this point. This G4 is looking for that Crescent Slash. Able to hit the backline minions there as well, so he can continue pushing this wave out. And I've actually really liked how he's played the laning phase on this Diana, relentlessly shoving just to make sure that Naru couldn't get any poke in. He's just killing minions with left, right, and center. He was also almost two levels ahead there, Oriana, just ticking that level 10 mark. So in a very comfortable position here, G4, and should be able to put the rest of the team on his back for the next five to 10 minutes. They're waiting for that two items to like to list. Honestly, they're just waiting for one item at this stage before they consider actually grouping to any regard and fighting whatsoever. But Keep in mind that Zeitnot will have the spike at around the same time. 007X spotting Crystal out here in the river. Looks like coming they down as well. Yeah, they're looking for a collapse. Just might have been. But they're going to let Crystal go. So far, it seems like 007 and mainly the Titans have done a great job of keeping track of where Crystal has been. We talked about how he loves being super aggressive in this set. Well, he hasn't really had an opportunity to be too aggressive in this one. Well, the thing with Crystal is he's aggressive, but not overly aggressive ever, is that he'll just sit back and keep vision at a, at a safe zone, essentially. He'll never proactively go in. Speaking of going in, hold on. Yeah, having some trouble.
Yeah, it's sort of actually the opposite here with Crystal because, yes, he's often aggressive with where he's getting his vision down, with where he's positioned, but it's always calculated. He's always yeah. making sure that he's not getting himself into a position where he could be in trouble, whereas I think of aggression as, you know, someone that's just going to run it. That's yeah. not Crystal. Crystal's making sure he's... Knows everything. Everyone flashing out of the way of the Tempered Fate, though, as Nara is just going to get destroyed by G4. Crystal here gets Moonfold up. Moss is very low, somehow still alive. His magical journey taken forever by Rydal. Bangkok Titans all grouped as five, and we'll see whether this means Dragon. Certainly should mean Dragon. They've got the numbers advantage down here right now. Teleport available. No, there's no real need to even use it. Wallop's just going to recall, you know. Confidence Callisto on that Dragon. Dragon number one is secured by the Titans. It's dead even in gold after finding that pick onto Naru, but the Titans putting the gank in effect on the invade, even securing away the blue buff that Naru just had uh, donated to him. I'm just not sure how Moss managed to survive that. He was just so incredibly low. There was AoE flying everywhere and just managed to avoid it. Oriana was dead super quick in that fight. Still has the shockwave available, so that sings to someone how that fight went. Completely caught out of position. The Unbreakable was up for Braum, so he's never really going to look like dying too quickly, to say the least. So all things considered, though, Bangkok Titans, they make a very smart engage and a very smart invade. It timed well around the blue buff, knowing that they'll have members there to find at the very least, and in this case, take down. 007's the aggressive jungler. He'll be the one that looks for the fights, whereas Crystal will place down vision. He'll look for you, but if you're not there, he'll actually take camps. If you are there, he'll just watch from a distance. Belling Slam from 007 gets him over the wall as the Titans pressure in the mid lane now. Don't know that they're going to be too effective in taking anything as there is a strong defensive line from Dark Passage. So far, they've got the kills and the first dragon, but Dark Passage are dead even in gold. Zeitnot, is he looking to 1v1 Lloyd right now? Something that is. Gets some damage across, out. dancing around. He does so much. Flash shield, double flash as Lloyd gets out, misses the spear. But here is G4. He's going to find Rydal. Slow locks him down. He flashes. Zeitnot is low. G4 looks to get the kill. The He's so low. Oh. He gets picked <laughs> up by Moss. Oh, dear. Ooh, His little. dead body took the journey. <laughs> the Akathian <laughs> journey. <laughs> a magical surprise. Oh, dear. <laughs> Some would say that that could be a dark passage, Rusty. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that was unreal, though. That was just, that was done really well again from Bangkok Titans. They have Diana in all of the right places, finding all of the right kills, not even waiting for the Q to connect, because has the Nasha's Tooth can auto attack you and isn't the assassin that is spell reliant. So, very oh, smart play here from Bangkok Titans. We're going to see this again. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he can take the journey and run back around and exploit on nothing. It's quite saddening, really. Yeah. Oh, Poor dear. little Kog'Maw. <laughs> that is actually his first death of the game. And, you know, he actually did have a CS and experience advantage over Lloyd. You can see that that's now been evened up. It's 10 to 10, and the CS is pretty even as well as even Warlock gets to take out the turret away from Elwyn, who was pretty effectively keeping Warlock locked down in lane. Yeah, came to do with recall timings and positions in fights. So Warlock having that Rod of Ages actually does damage now and continues to scale in terms of laning phase, phase strength, has the wave clear, has the damage to output onto Elwyn, who's building tanky stats, building health. So his damage starts to drop off, whereas he was winning with base stats. Right now, find some damage onto the bottom tier one. But is he quite able to drop it down? The mid tier one was similarly dropped by G4. He's now taking the wolf camp. Yeah. Interesting stuff. I actually thought that Lloyd was waiting for a face call there, but decided not to pull the trigger on Desire Not and Rydal. And it looks like Leandri's Torment is going to be the second item here for Naru. And I just don't feel like he's going to have very much damage. I mean, I guess it's going for like, let's try and get the uh, magic pen to get some like early damage down, but I don't really know. Well, I could justify it all I want, but yep. it's not good. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was thinking that as well. I just didn't quite trust so my it, it analytical strength at that 1500 point. 1500 gold, and it gives you about 10 flat, 20 flat magic pen. 
irrespective, the amount that it's going to give you in terms of magic penetration is not even enough to get through the Diana, who has an Abyssal Scepter Merc Treads. You're better off going Void Staff second item and having the components of a Void Staff for the same cost, and you yeah. would be having a better item build compared to what that is right now, which just doesn't feel right because you're buying it for the health thing. Yeah, Ooh, slightly. Naru, Naru, speaking oh. of which, is going to get punished for the build. <laughs> G4 on a rampage now, and Dark Passage going to take advantage of it by taking down the bottom out of turret. Oh, here come the rest of the Titans. They could catch Zeitnot. He dodges out to the side, still going to be knocked up. Will they be able to lock him down? They succeed. The Fates oh, Call oh, oh. locks him out, but Lloyd is dancing around. He dodges. He's still alive. The 007X finally finishes him off. Rydal is the next target. He gets destroyed wow. by G4, and the Titans are netting kill after kill. And they do not look, look like slowing down anytime soon. This is timed a minute away from the Dragon being available, so control of the area well and truly theirs. They've got the bottom turret ready for them to take. They're just waiting on a minion wave to do so. This one will go down. And just like that, the game is starting to snowball. Oriana gets picked in the middle lane and immediately after the bottom lane, the same thing happens and it shouldn't be. Yeah, and the interesting thing here is the fact that Dark Passage play around Naru so often, and this is what I was expecting Detonation Focus Me to do a little bit more of, was to focus this mid laner, focus the shot caller, the captain of Dark Passage, and it's now happened, and G4 and 007X, almost every single gank this game has been killing the Orianna, and it seems to be working wonders. I mean, you've got a seven out of the nine kills participated in here for G4. This Diana is so big at 6-2-1. and one. And he's an assassin player that has most of the kills. So if there was ever a person you would want that on, it's going to be G4 on this Diana. So all things considered, they're doing real well here, Bangkok Titans. And Naru, the shot caller for the team, as you mentioned, if you're in a losing lane and you're trying to shot call as the mid laner, you are often much more hesitant to actually say yes to fights and yes to engages because you don't feel like you're strong enough yourself compared to your opposition. It takes a massive amount of mental fortitude as well to yeah. make sure that you can stay in the right mindset. Consider the fact that, you know, your Cogmore has got a heck of a lot of farm. You've almost got the Blade of the Ruin King completed. You're not going to... You're going to scale fantastically into the late stage of the game and you can yes. just hold on and try and get things moving forward because they have an answer to the Callista. They can use the Twisted Advance, use the Shockwave, try and explode that massive hyper carry that can be so slippery. But it's going to be so hard with this huge Diana romping around the rift. It certainly is. 23 minutes and a half. G4 a looks tank, for yet G4. another kill. I don't think he minds too much. I don't think it's yeah. a tank either, relative to what G4 <laughs> is. It's just another champion. That Lloyd solos the dragon for his team while the rest of the Titans hold Dark Passage down in the mid lane. And Titans, as we mentioned, starting to snowball this game further ahead. Certainly in a fantastic position. But again, you touched on it earlier, Atlas, the fact that they have got scaling here from Dark Passage. If they can just attempt to do what the Chiefs were trying to do in that last game, farm, scale, and actually get some items. They're waiting for the three big items. It's probably going to be three and a half now because Nari has a haunting, guys. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Zyke not working towards his second item will still be doing a lot of damage once he finishes the Blade of the Ruined King. And our, the top laner, Elwin, always going to be tanky, always going to be relevant if he has damage to back him. So if you look at what Dark Passage have, their scaling is well and truly still there. It is on the table. It's not out of the way yet because the difference in gold is only 4k. Yeah. Definitely not too much. And one thing that can be said about Dark Passage is the fact that they farm exceptionally well. They... I mean, the fact that G4 is ahead makes a fair bit of sense. Dark Passage is not going to be taken there. Good. Sorry, that is a magic journey, not a Dark Passage. <laughs> that one is back to Lantern. The Titans start to siege forward now as Dark Passage forced to play defensive and wait this one out. Two items finished for Lloyd means he's going to do a lot what? of damage. G4 just finished a fulls on his hourglass on his last back. Yeah. Okay. Yep. He's 6-2-1. He's actually hadn't recalled in a while. Currently, let's see, that's two and a half thousand gold ahead of his lane opponent. Not bad. Is that all? Yeah. That's no big deal. No big deal at all. And if we take into account that one of them has a haunting, guys, it's about three thousand, <laughs> no, four thousand gold ahead. <laughs> so I just don't like You're not the a item. fan of it, eh? Hey? No. Well, of course, you were casting the LPL. God be, of course, the Oriana <laughs> Master himself did build Leandri's Torment a few times. Of course, does like that build somewhat. 
So if you saw from anymore. the rest of the gold, it was actually close to even everywhere else. I believe Lloyd had only about a 500 to 700 gold lead. Warlock only had about a 200 gold lead. The only place it was really different was Moss was 1,000 gold ahead of Rydal. Well, that's interesting. Of course, the extra turret is going to help on the global gold scale as Moss is actually going to get caught out here by Crystal. Zeit not unable to really find this one. Crystal going to get stunned up by the Braum, who now has the Fates Call to get him out of trouble if he does fall prey to any funny business. Dark Passage now grouped as four. Meanwhile, and Elwind's just going to die underneath the turret. Yeah. Yeah, keep in mind that Elwind is the Maokai. Yeah, he's the tank. He's I, the I one tried that's... to call him a tank, remember? Yeah, he's the one that's meant to be able to absorb damage and not die, but G4 is just so far ahead. Yep. He can split push right now. He's got the teleport anyway. They can run a 1-3-1, one, one, which is what Bangkok Titans love to do, irrespective of how the map is going. It's only going to go oh. better for them here. Good flash from Lloyd to dodge the Fates call from Rydal, but the Titans are putting pressure all across the map. And slowly but surely, Dark Passage are falling apart at the scene. Morlock almost Oops. gets caught, but the 1-3-1 one, one groups up to keep him safe as Lloyd continues to split in the top lane. I actually really love that, though. The Rydal throwing out the Tempered Fate manages to get the flash from Lloyd. And if they can find a fight in the next five minutes that where they can take down the Callista, that could be a big deal here for Dark Passage. I completely agree, because the Maokai is also really good at getting onto the Callista, who has no escapes once he is on now with not having that flash available. So definitely a window for them in regards to finding a kill. Of course, the Bard Ultimate will be back before the flash is. Everything pretty much is in terms of ultimates compared to summoner spells. One thing I really want to talk about here is that a Frozen Heart was the item of choice for Moss. And he is ahead in gold. We saw that a thousand gold hit earlier. He's just going straight into the resistances to team fight for his team. He's a part of the three man in the one three one, and he has to be the big tank because you look at the rest of that roster. Gragas has gone for the team based tanky item, gone for the locket, and they needed someone to just sit in the direct front. And you know, Baron's also on the mapping. I love the well, Bangkok Titans. Well, with the Callista available, they can tread through its health so quickly. Crystal will get a ward over the wall to spot it out. Here come the rest of Dark Passage. But that just buys more time for yes. Lloyd and G4. Elwind, oh, he's probably not feeling too safe. The turret is being shredded. <laughs> Casual three-level advantage here by G4 as well. 30 minutes into this game, he's going to be level 18. Hot. Four levels above Naru very soon? completely ridiculous from this Diana at the moment. And I really love this build out of Moss as well. He's grabbed the um, Frozen Heart so that he's eliminating the one big threat on Dark Passage. The fact that Maokai is not going to be doing any damage. Naru has a haunting, guys. So it's only going to be the Kog'Maw that's really going to be a threat to anyone here on the Bangkok hey, Titans. Man. And now, probably not. Look, haunting, guys, is a good item. I don't want to <laughs> say it too much, but it's good against health stacking champions in terms of its efficiency. Compared to a Void Staff and against people like Lulu that doesn't have a whole lot of health. <laughs> Come on, man. We don't need to defend it anymore. Yeah. I so, just, like, it's okay. It's, it's one of my favorite better. items, to be perfectly honest. I love Leandre Stormant. I'm a Zyra player. Yeah, well, but it's better on Zyra. It's <laughs> not <laughs> <laughs> So G4 is doing the famous, okay, I beat you in lane, now I'm going to split push, and anything else you send at me, I'm also going to kill. Yeah, that's, and that's the what we expected. And all sorts of stuff. Yeah. He's, anything that's basically alive near him dies. Mm -hmm. And this is the big risk here for Dark Passage, is that they can still team fight. They've got the Orianna, so 100% capable of fighting as a team of five. But Bangkok Titans are not allowing this to happen. They've got one top lane most of the time in the Lulu, and they've got one bottom lane most of the time. The only person that can deal with G4 is Elwind. And when I say deal, take that with a grain of salt. He's the only <laughs> one that can sit in that lane and not die in it one second flat. Yeah, he takes a little bit more time to die. Yeah, he still does generally die, though. We've seen it a couple of times now as Bangkok Titans are going to be able to take down their third dragon of the game, 007X, with the smite. Not needed because there is, in fact, a ring. Dragon. Dragon number three now. Attack finds Crystal as Lloyd dashes forward with some help from Warlock. And once again, G4 looking for the flank, looking for anyone who's pressed just a bit too far forward to add to that already impressive scoreline. 30 minutes in, Titans have the lead, but they can't quite crack Dark Passage's defense. Yeah, take a second to realize how good Bangkok Titans dive will be if they execute it right. They've got a Lulu with a Death Cat Rod of Ages to go on a Diana. Yeah, oh my good. Who has a Zonia's and an Abyssal Scepter. So not gonna die. Really, what is Elwin? But 
utilize the head of the floor. Yeah, G4 getting a bit too aggressive. Might be punished here. Drops the oh, Zonias. Cool He's pose. buying himself some time. Oh, man. This is actually pretty tricky. I don't know if he can survive. Knockup is locking him down. He doesn't have any way to get health back. They're going to shred through. He dashes forward, but Elwin gets the shutdown. That was just over-aggressive positioning here. He was looking to get the turret down, and Crystal can just use that ultimate and get back to a position where the Baron can no longer be contested. Yeah, it was so smart out of Dark Passage as well to use the Rek'Sai Maokai combo to take down this Diana that needed two people because they can both get so easily towards that Baron. Not allow that to happen, but Naru, he's, he's gone. gone aggressive. 007X has the wild growth on him, but still going to fall down. Zytnot with a lot of damage. Walla flashes out of the way of the Shockwave, which is going to find no one. Hula Hoops! on the rift at the moment as Moss taking a fair bit of damage but Unbreakable helping him out. Bangkok Titans without G4 look like a very different beast. Zeitnot is so big right now. He was absolutely untouched throughout that entire skirmish and you saw once he got onto 007X despite the full health shield from Lulu, he shred through him. Dark Passage, they're a side that can 100% do what they just did and that is group up as five members and team fight. Of course, Zeitnot Having those two big items is infinitely dangerous. Not having G4 is so bad for this team because, again, he is pretty much the entirety of them. They've got a Lulu to bolster his strength at the moment in terms of team fighting. And if he's dead, they should not be anywhere near the enemy team. Okay, okay. Um, I take it all back, what I said about the haunting guys. I actually love him. Because now he's gone for the Rylos Crystal Scepter, so he'll get the double extra damage from the burn from that particular item once he completes it. And the consistent damage that's going to be available from Dark Passage is actually going to be rather high. The fact that the Wild Growth can be burnt through with that Leandris as well, which does percentage health damage. And look, Bangkok Titans, they're all about avoiding potential burst. But Dark Passage are all about consistent damage and wearing you down. So I think the reason he's Maybe. gone for this... I was going for something, you know? I was, <laughs> That was my final justification. <laughs> I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> so the reason he's gone for this build is because he needs defensive stats. It's a very good kiting-based build as well against assassins, and there's only the one assassin who will be getting in your face. So you get away from G4 with that Rylaz. You don't necessarily need to use the W and expend mana to do so. You force G4 to go over-aggressive to catch you then. Having the health from the Rylaz, having the health from the Haunting guys, and some resistance from the Athenes, is good to deal with G4, but if Lloyd ever touches you, you are gone. And yeah. honestly, if you went for a Death Cat and you went for a Lloyd Staff, if Lloyd was near you, he was gone. And also there's that big issue of Callista doing a lot of damage if left unchecked. And if you don't kill her in a very short space of time, she runs away. Or, you. or takes a sneaky Baron. Lloyd is going to pull Moss away from Rydal and Zeitnot. They were trying to sneak the Baron once again while Lloyd split pushes, but the strategy didn't work the first time. It didn't work the second time now. And Dark Passage starting to hit some of those scary, scary damage spikes as Zeitnot gets closer and closer to a Phantom Dancer. It's about breaking the base now, right? Yeah. Because they're forcing the Baron to actually just bring attention to it. They don't want to do the Baron. They just want you to come towards it. If Dark Passage bring four members there, it means that there is only one left on the bottom side of the map. And if there's one there, then G4 can just walk in and hit your turrets. No one is going to stop him from doing that if there's only one member there. So this is what their strategy is to break the base. And once the base is broken, the game becomes significantly easier for them to close it out. Well, that being said, Zeke's Harbinger has been completed here on the side of Dark Passage. So Riot are going to be bolstering Zytonaut's power. Uh -oh. G4, Crystal, looking for some Prey Seekers there as the dynamic duo of Elrin, Elwind and Crystal can try and beat this Diana to death. Oh, that's not good. The one thing I would have liked to have seen from this Diana is an upgraded Yellow Trinket because the split push is consistent. Oh, they're going. Oh, they yeah. look to set up the dive right now. They're going to try wow, rushing nice. through this turret. They able, they're able to break the inhibitor. But here's Naru. Shockwave oh, gets Zanya's G4 is in a tricky situation. Knockup keeps him standing. He tries to dive into the back, but he's just being locked down by Elwin and Crystal. There's a fight. A huge Fates Call on the side of Lloyd and Moss. Lloyd gets stunned against the wall. Fates Call pulled him out. G4 is still alive. They're going to turn on to Crystal. Crystal gets destroyed by Lloyd, and G4 leads the charge anew. G4 with Warlock. Oh, no what? Death. 
Yep, just gonna kill Naru one more time. Elwind now in a lot of trouble. He's gonna have to get out of there. Zynot, what are you doing on that side of the fight? Double kill for G4. Cosmic binding too little too late as the Akathian surprise going to kickle, tickle the Bangkok Titans. And Nexus turrets under fire. It looks like Bangkok Titans gonna make it 1-1. And that's gonna mean 1-1 apiece for everyone here at the IWCQ. We have got ourselves a tournament, gentlemen. Teleport from G4 for the style as the Nexus goes down and the Titans take the win. 13-6, 36 minutes in. That is why you don't give a Diana kill. If there's yep. one thing we can take from that right there is the G4 put the team on his back and said, all right, guys, we're getting a victory. That is exactly what they did right there. The teleport into that bottom lane was a masterstroke because then Lulu can protect the Diana who only has two tanks hitting him. I didn't see him at much health drop <laughs> No. The shields were so big. And the fact that he was able to drop an inhibitor turret in four auto attacks? Absurd. Just ridiculous. And there's the fact that you can just see that the Bangkok Titans so much more comfortable in this split push scenario. And the fact that G4 able to create all of this pressure on the map, he couldn't do it when they were playing against the Chiefs. He was on a Varus. It's not the same kind of pick. That's for sitting in the back of a team fight, never really going in, not initiating for your team, unless you're going to be throwing out that ultimate. And even then, I mean, it's something that you want to do reactionary as opposed to aggressively. And he can now do that. On the Diana, I mean, you're straight in there you're using your face to smack people <laughs> down. And look, it works so much better for this team. Yeah, such incredible play from G4. You know, we were talking so much about the priority pick of that Callista, but that was backup. The big star, the big highlight was G4. Welcome to this team in a nutshell. Yeah. You look at Lloyd, he is the secondary carry. G4 is the entirety of that team. And it was just really well executed at the end. It took them about 10 to 15 minutes to really set up to get that turret down. And that was a sign of weakness, essentially, from this side. It's one thing that has been replicated through all of the wildcard teams is the inability to use a lead and actually close out the game effectively. But they got there in the end because G4 was just so damn big yeah. that it did not matter. And all it took was that one moment, the Baron baits that went for 10 minutes. It was all to get this end result, to break the bottom side of the base. The second that was gone, the game was a whitewash. Excellent play from the Titans. But to be fair, the Titans did get to play their style. The skirmish, run around the map, let G4 kill things. Yeah, and I mean, that's a big deal to talk about. The fact that, you know, this is the Bangkok Titans in their comfort zone. And we'll see whether any of these other IWCQ teams can really put them on the back foot and force them to mix it up. Kind of like what the Chiefs did. The fact that they forced them into this sort of weird poke comp with the Varus there in the mid lane. Of course, G4 had played it in the past. It's not like he was, wasn't used to that champion, but that's just not how they look comfortable. And we'll see how these teams force them onto different picks. Yeah, we'll certainly find out. We're going to toss it out to our analysts to let them know or